Hello and welcome to this edition of Credit Matters TV. My name is Hans Wright, Managing Director of the Financial Sector Research Group uh, in Europe. Today we are going to be talking about the global multi-lines and these are the, the larger, more complex insurance groups that operate in many countries offering both life and property casualty products. And I'm joined today by Karen Clements, Managing Director from the Insurance Ratings Group, to talk about a report that's just been published. So welcome, Karen. Um, so f first of all, you know, could you explain why, why we think that capital is still an important rating factor for these, for these insurance groups? Yeah, we do expect 2011 to be another really challenging year for the global multi-line insurers. And there's, in summary, three main points we believe that will weigh on their capital basis. And the first is um, asset price volatility, the second is um, interest rate levels, and the third one is the regulatory change we see. And um, why do we see a continued risk of asset price volatility? That's because there are market concerns about or renewed market concerns about sovereign debt. Uh, we also believe there's still a potential risk of an economic setback. Um, in terms of the interest rates, we clearly recognize that they have been rising since they're, they're low in the third quarter of 2010. But generally speaking, they're still at a relatively low level. And that's a particular challenge for those global multi-line insurers that have significant exposure to traditional guarantee business um, because for them we see a continued narrowing betwo between what they pay out to the policyholder and what they actually can earn on the investment side. So this means that the value of the guarantee and options in the products really increases and with it also the capital requirements. And the third one is really the significant and comprehensive regulatory change we see in many markets across the globe, just to cite uh, Solvency II in the European Union as one example. And that is an uncertain environment for these global multi-line insurers. But also we ultimately believe that these new revisions or the, that these new supervisory regimes will really promote, um, in the end, higher capital requirements. Okay. So, I mean, clearly then that there's many capital issues. So it's in the context of the ratings that we have on these insurance groups. You know, how supportive is their capitalization of, of their current ratings? Well, generally we observe that capitalization has really improved since 2008. And just to give you a couple of figures, um, if we look at um, total adjusted capital calculated according to our own risk-based capital model, that has increased by a significant 17% across the, G the global multi-line insurers, comparing year in 2009 with year in 2008. And on average, um, the capital adequacy for these groups is at the high A level. Um, but then there's really a mixed pic picture depending on at which company you look at. So there are some which are redundant at that level. There are some which are deficient at that level. And for for five out of the 11 groups we cover in that report, um, the capitalization is still a, rate, a relative rating, rating weakness. And the reasons really differ depending on which company. So in some cases it's um, that the investments, investment exposure is above average. Um, in some cases our concern is the high amount of intangibles on the balance sheet. And for others it's just, it's just a reflection of a more efficient capital management strategy. Right. So there's clearly a lot going on with, with the market, mm -hmm. the capital positions are different. So redundant at a single A level means they've got more capital than they need to mm -hmm. support the single A. So, so uh, w the position for these companies is different, as you've just said. So how, how are they really thinking about their strategies, their financial strategies for dealing with the changes that, that are happening mm -hmm. in the environment? Mm -hmm. Despite the fact that their positions or their, that their starting positions are different, as you just mentioned, there's one common theme we see in our discussion, discussions with the management teams, and that's really a clear focus on preserving and building balance sheet strength and uh, reducing balance sheet volatility. And we've seen a whole lot of measures, measures taken by these companies um, in order to de-risk the asset and liability side of the balance sheet. And that will arise from, um, for example, reducing equity exposure 
um, on the um, reducing concentration risk um, on the liability side, really uh, shifting the product portfolio to more unit-linked fee-based life products, um, cutting down the crediting rate to policyholders, and really also uh, having a very, very close look at the business model and disposing of non-core non assets. Right, so really reducing the mm -hmm. risk across the, uh, the piece. So, I mean, we've talked about capital as being a real <coughs> driver within the ratings. Um, I mean, clearly th there's other factors we consider, not just within capital, but the overall rating. So can you just, uh, you know, talk about what else goes into a rating other than just the the risk-adjusted capital ratios. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's always been important when we explain how are we um, determining, determining the financial strength of an insurance company to really make the point that it's not just about capitalization. There are whole capitalization is just one out of, out of eight um, rating factors. And it's also important to bear in mind that um, our assessment of capitalization is not just the result of our capital adequacy model. There are other factors such as quality of capital, the volatility of capital, or the strength of the retained earnings, because that's really how a company is building capitalization in the future. And then are other rating factors which are really at least equally important, such as competitive position, operating performance, or management and strategy. Okay, great. Well, thanks very much, Karen. I mean, there was a report that we published uh, yesterday on February the 28th that goes into more detail of this called Capitalization Remains a Key Component of Global Multi-Line Insurers' Creditworthiness Amid Uncertain Market Conditions. So thank you very much, Karen. Thank you.